welcome again to another episode of Tech Town Talks. Today we're talking with Rick Goddard with Callum Technologies International. Rick, how's it going? And thanks for joining us. Well, thank you. Thanks for uh, allowing me to chat with you about this uh, very important topic for our state. Yeah, for kind of for our listeners, we're going to get into kind of fire suppression drones and this new kind of technological advancement in kind of fighting fires. Rick, can you give us a little background about yourself and kind of your company? Sure. Um, uh, spent uh, a career in the Marine Corps as an aviation officer, uh, ultimately being in the uh, command and control community, uh, working on direct air support. Um, so just think of whether it's, uh, you know, ordnance, but also all the other supplies to support the troops and do things like that from the air. Uh, left that, got into the packaging industry and uh, developed some, um, some large scale packaging for the Air Force. Uh, so that they could deliver meals and water and things like that um, in combat zones without introducing metal to the battlefield because metal gets repurposed against us for IEDs and things like that. Oh, wow. So that's that's how I started, you know, kind of mixing my aviation background with the packaging background. And um, uh, we were at the time, the, the company was called Warehouser. They were one of the largest private landowners of Timberlands in North America at the time. And of course, wildfires, uh, when you're a timber company, is burning your treasury up. So we, right. um, we, we started with this idea and um, uh, commercialized it. And uh, I started Calum in, um, in 2009. And uh, we were uh, adopted in the, the, in the EU uh, by 2012-2013. And so kind of, you know, I, I understand you have kind of developed some sort of, of drone technology. Was it called the Guardian? Is that right? Guardian. Well, it's not actually a drone. It's a delivery system. And and what it allows, and so just think of it, it's very simply, it's a it's a 265-gallon box. Uh, and and you get 16 of them on a C-130. And the, and the concept here is to be able to surge with available aircraft without having to modify the aircraft to fight the fire safely. So it rolls on the aircraft like cargo, rolls off like cargo in midair, opens up and makes it rain. So it brings the available aircraft to fight wildfires from the very limited amount that we have now to you know over a thousand more available aircraft instantly. And this capability is consistent with a very well-practiced, very well-trained mission capability called container delivery system, which is CDS. So just think about how we deliver right now beans, bullets, and band-aids to the folks in the field um, 24 hours a day, and you have to drop it very accurately. So you can't drop it on your on your good guys, and but it's got to be accurately so it doesn't go to the bad guys. Right. And so that's that's why it's well practiced. So we came up with this system to just handle the surge needs that these mega fires present uh, in today's wildland firefighting environment. So I guess kind of currently, what's what's going on in, in, in kind of aerial fire suppression? How, how does it currently work? Right. So, I mean, traditionally, you've used something from the air. If you think about just when there's wildland fires, it um, it usually preoccupies the news circuit pretty well. Right. Uh, it's got everybody's attention. And uh, aviation has traditionally been, um, think of the tankers and the Bambi buckets. So there's an entire spectrum of delivery capability, whether it's just water or whether it's retardant. Uh, there's a spectrum that goes from a you know several hundred gallon bucket all the way up to the 747 that was dropping, you know, 6,000 gallons. Um, the problem is, is that the, these aircraft oftentimes, with the exception of helicopters, are single mission aircraft. That means all they do is fight wildland fires. So they sit a lot of times idle and there's a lot of cost there. We still need them. Uh, and I want to make clear to you and the audience, you know, our company and our system is not in any way saying we're replacing anything. What we're saying is when the need hits, there's just not enough. How do we get enough? And that surge mm -hmm. capability is what we enable. So if you don't have single mission aircraft um, engaged here, they can go do other things uh, in the off season or when then there's not a fire. But when there is a fire, you need every, every bit of delivery capability you can muster. And our system uh, follows the conventional container delivery protocols. 
So it's a known mission, known environment. A lot of training goes on if you think of what C-130 folks do every day anyway. And now you can introduce that into the, um, into the wildfire um, toolkit for the incident commander without having to buy a bunch more airplanes. Right. Can, it, can you go, go back to kind of, you were explaining the containers, you know, what are right. the containers made of and, you know, how many gallons can they hold uh, and kind of what, what does it look like when one of these drops? Yeah. So think of a, think of a large box, just a square box made out of corrugated. Uh, it is very thick. It's, it's about uh, inch and three quarters thick holds uh, 2000 pounds of payload. Uh, it is the very same design that around the world we ship liquid, um, everything from um, various edible oils to cosmetics around the world in these containers. They're very strong. Uh, their strength to weight ratio is uh, you know, 22 to one. Um, and so it goes on like a box in the, back of the, in the back of the aircraft. When it deploys, it goes out the back ramp, tips and the cap uh, extends and begins an opening sequence and just think of it as a as a 260 gallon glass of water pouring out but you have 16 of them in the payload going out all at once wow. so you have 16 you know essentially metric ton raindrops opening at once and and so i, I guess so if you have 16 of those what, what, you know the math on that how many gallons is that a little over four thousand gallons Wow, so that's that's almost as big as that big 747 you were just talking about earlier. Yeah, not quite. It's 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 a little bigger than the, the C-130 with the MAFS system, which is the tank that slides inside, uh, holds around 3,000 gallons. They uh, because of the weight of the MAFS system, that's 17,000 pounds empty, right? And it rolls in and it, it it drives all that material through the jump door that's got a nozzle and that sprays it out. Um, the difference with our system is you fly about twice as high, you know, you know, between four and 500 feet you want to drop because it's coming out as a, as a 250 gallon plus raindrop opening up. We're actually making it rain instead of all the material, you know, coming sideways, it actually stops its forward momentum and, and makes it rain. Wow. And I guess what, what's kind of, what's the waste product at the end and, and kind of how's Corrig it, how's it yeah, going? the paper. It's it's 95% uh, compostable. Uh, it is 100% recyclable. Um, you know our our contention and what other countries we just got through doing quite extended training and operations in Israel and Uruguay at the same time. We had we had a Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere uh, uh, Air Force working with us, and their position is if they can get there fast enough, they're going to clean something up. If you look at the uh, the losses either from the Creek Fire, or from Paradise, who's you know a huge one in California, or from what they're dealing with in Colorado right now, you're cleaning up something. What we're proposing is if you can respond quick enough with a large enough payload, you're cleaning up a smaller area. So right. uh, that's that's our contention. Yeah, you know the the, the head folks, even in California, will tell you uh, the head firefighting folks. You know if you're there quick enough, the largest fire we've ever had could have likely been put out with a five gallon bucket of water if you were there quick enough. Right. So I, I guess kind of, you know, just to expand upon that, can you just talk about how these, you know, simple boxes of water can be powerful and kind of stopping wildfires? Well, you can, you, you can attack um, with uh, multiple aircraft uh, that are currently in our inventory, over 700 C-130 say that are in our inventory uh, very quickly and 24 hours a day, you can drop at night. Um, the other thing is, is you can drop anything that's currently approved on the forest service list, you can drop. So all the different payloads of gels and foams and retardants and things like that. You can also drop higher viscosity materials. So think of, um, you know, fires in different sorts of fuel sources, uh, because we're not dependent on putting it out through a, a Bombay door or through a, um, nozzle because it opens below and behind you, you can see the, uh, your audience can't see it, but I got a picture up behind me of, of the drops that we were doing at Yuma Proving Grounds, um, where the container comes out of the aircraft, begins its opening sequence below and behind the aircraft, decelerates and opens up. So you can drop very high viscosity materials very quickly uh, to coat the fuel and, and go after it quickly. Yeah. Just kind of speed is life. 
yeah, for example, I guess, you know, we had this big fire up near Lake Tahoe uh, yes. this year. Can you kind of talk about how, you know, if your product was out there, how that might have, that outcome might have been different? Well, you know, you, you, I, I don't want to speculate on the negative, right? Because I just want to be careful with that. But it just makes sense if you could deliver 4,000 gallons every 20 minutes over a target area multiple times. That's per aircraft. It takes about, um, depending on where they're taking off from. So let's say they were taking off from uh, South Lake Tahoe Airport, right? Get over target pretty quickly. It, it takes uh, about 10 or 12 minutes to load the airplane. It, it load, the containers go in just like a, a Pez dispenser, right? It just right. Everything goes in uh, and the airplanes just make turn. If you had the available aircraft to fight where our, our incident commanders in the ground didn't have to anguish, and you know, there's some been very compelling articles written about you know having to decide which neighborhoods to defend and which neighborhoods not right what if you what if you didn't have to make that decision what if your resources were exponentially increased from the air so now you can use the helicopters and the other ones in certain types of terrain right uh you can use uh the hot shots and other types of types of terrain and you could use a CAF system is what the what the Air Guard calls it, which is containerized aerial firefighting. If you could use our system on the rest of them, especially when it's remote, when the fire starts out running you, you can get in front of it. And you can, the, the term they use is they can pancake the drops. That means dropping up one upon the other. But if you had, again, dozens, if not hundreds of more available aircraft to fight the fires here in the West, I think you'd get a better outcome. Yeah, obviously, yeah. Uh, Kenna, what, where, where are you guys kind of currently using this technology? And do you have some success stories you could share with us? Sure. Well, this last summer, we were used uh, in Jerusalem on the West Jerusalem fire by the Israelis, uh, Northern Macedonia, Greece, Romania, um, Peru uh, are, were the ones we were over this last summer. And I guess how, how long have you guys been kind of looking at this fire suppression stuff? I think you said, what, 2008 or nine? We started the company in 2009, um, and we actually began uh, experimentation in 2004. Uh, we were out in Arizona Red Lake bed figuring out how to make this reliably work. You know, one of the stories I'll tell you is during the test uh, with the Israeli Air Force, uh, the head of their fire brigade came over to me and said, uh, you know, uh, or came over to actually to our to our uh, to our commercial guy that was there and said you know, your system is boring. It just works every time. And, uh, you know, in aviation, boring is good, by the right. way. Uh, so, you know, we, there's a, there was a great story. The, the folks had a situation in uh, the Carpathian Mountains in Romania where a, a fire broke out. It was running down a, a ridgeline, jumped across, and cut off a town that was on a lake. And the only way out was this one road, and it was blocked. And people were moving out into the lake to watch their village burn, their town burn. And the only safe spot was in the lake. And the Romanian Air Force came rolling in with our system, uh, not only stopped the fire, but were able to paint a safety corridor back down that road where people could get out. And uh, it, was a, it was a big, uh, it was a wonderful thing to, to see that uh, product that is made here in California um, save homes there in Romania. Yeah. Um, kind of, you know, what have been some of your, I guess your roadblocks in getting, you know, this product used here in the u.s and kind of uh you know what's the outlook for you kind of starting to you know get started here where we really need fire suppression help right well you know very early on the air guard um, saw the the opportunity for this you know they went through uh, a couple of bad incidents and a particularly bad loss where they uh, lost an aircraft and and um uh, some crew members uh, uh using a math system and they conducted a two-year evaluation of us in um, uh, going back to about 2017, 18, um, and concluded in 2019 at Yuma Proving Grounds to prove uh, not only safe in the air, safe on the ground, but that does it does it open up like it's supposed to. And um, and you know, glowing results, uh, you know, 100% success from the standpoint of of meeting all their mission requirements. Uh, so they were they were very active with that. They even went out at the behest of the U.S. Forest Service and bought retardant to do a Forest Service test. And I would tell you, just my opinion is, the Forest Service became conveniently unavailable 
to witness those tests. So the big hurdle we have is to getting the Forest Service to move. Um, the Air Guard folks, the, the, the aircraft folks see the need for it. It's a very gentle system on the airplane. Uh, it, it, the more aggressive flight missions and profiles you have to fly puts more maintenance cycle on the airplane. This is a very gentle system on the airplane. So it, it, it reduces your cost that way. And you know our battle is really a, uh, a different way of doing things in a, in a heavily uh, traditional ensconced way of thinking. Um, and and it's, it's a challenge and, and it's really laying at the Forest Service feet to move on these things and to get things going. It's, a, it's a, been an uphill battle, but uh, you know, concurrent with all that, overseas, we're, we're almost not able to keep up right now. Uh, we've got uh, folks going on in, in, in Portugal, in Korea, and now Airbus has asked us to work with them. In Indonesia, they build an aircraft called the Casa 245 down in Indonesia. So uh, they want to use all of their available aircraft to fight wildfires. That was really the reason why we went into and were invited in Peru. Uh, Peru got uh, fed up with having to contract airplanes from all over the world to fly all the way there, very expensive, and then leave, and they would only contract them when things already got so bad, and they're losing, you know, uh, life, they're losing property, and the environmental impact of these wildfires um, can't be under, or can't be overstated. You know, when you look at um, a fire like the Creek Fire or the Rim Fire that we had up in the 70s, and you look at the hydrocarbons thrown up in our atmosphere uh, it, it's been it's been terrible. I live in the San Joaquin Valley, and uh, there's been times when you just really even can't even go outside because of the yeah. wildland fires. I mean, you just can't. You've seen it up in Sacramento, right? right. The the, the right. air is orange, right? So if you add to that environmental cost, um, they don't even know. And there's some recent studies saying that it's still not completely calculated what the what the damage to our respiratory system is when you're breathing that. Right. Uh, it, it is in intensely toxic. Uh, it also, what's terrible is when these homes are lost in these fires, uh, that, that square foot where that home was becomes, it has to go through remediation before you can build on it because you've got now just had everything from, you know, drywall and carpet and everything else burned and dropped into the soil there. You have to remediate it right. before you can come back in and burn. And uh, so, you know, our contention is you're going to clean something up. So why not clean up a box? Why not go pick up a box and take care of the fire in a few hundred or even a thousand acres instead of a million acres? Right. That yeah, makes sense. Uh, you know, we, we've had a lot of people on talking about wildfire, uh, you know, how to prevent them, you know, what to do with them. Kind of what, what has your talks been with the uh, Cal Fire and the state about kind of using their technology? Well, at, at various levels, you know, the folks, uh, Director Giladucci and others are very interested. You know, that there, there's a bit of a, a barrier of getting through the Forest Service because, again, the overall responsibility often lies with them. The, the um, Interagency Air Tanker Board is another ag agent that uh, becomes a little bit, uh, when you approach them, they, they kind of give you this, <laughs> they point in right. these other directions. And... Um, it's the bureaucracy of, of, um, of a traditional thinking that becomes our biggest challenge. But, uh, you know, the, the Cal Fire folks have been uh, responsive to us. Uh, they, they, you know, they have a big mission at, uh, and they have a big Air Force already in place. So they understand the importance of aviation assets. But uh, our challenge continues to be the U.S. Force Service. They're the, they're the biggest hurdle by far. Interesting. Wow, that's fascinating. Well, it's awesome to talk to you and kind of get to know this product. If our listeners want to find out some more information about you and your company, you know, where could we find out, find that out? Well, you can go to our website, kalym.com, C-A-Y-L-Y-M.com. And uh, there's a, there's a bit of a call to action there to let people know that this capability exists in this country. Um, as I speak to you right now, we are putting together another two containers worth of systems to go to Israel. Uh, followed by more orders to South America. Um, so we can take care of our own state. I'm a native Californian, you know, started here when I went off the Marine Corps, came back to here, and this is my home. And uh, we've got to stop this place from burning up. Yeah. You know, we got to do something. Definitely. 
Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for your work. And hopefully we can get your product here in uh, California, put these fires out. Much uh, needed. Hey, Jared, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. Thanks. Take care. Bye.